So in this video we're going to look how to cross-analyze answers to surveys. And this is a survey that I've uh, used in the past. And the first thing to do when you've finished your survey and you've collected all your responses is to stop people from adding additional responses. So in the Google Forms you open up your survey, go to responses and just press that little button there and you will then be in a position to start analyzing. To open up the data it's in uh, the plain information is in this responses tab so we can scroll down and we can see you've got some nice charts and those are charts that just look at one particular question but if we want to cross analyze our information like we want to find out uh, what particular drinks people that like kebabs like to drink this doesn't show us so we need to do some analysis so to get hold of all the data we press on this little green button at the top with a cross in it and usually the first time you run that it'll ask you to create a spreadsheet once you've created your spreadsheet uh, once it'll just go straight to it okay so this is our uh, spreadsheet and here we've got 24 lines so with a heading that's 23 responses now let's have a look at some of this information so we've got our genders we've got our drinks we've got our food options with the particular drinks option notice that people could select more than one and if we go along these are the answers to what type of music people like so let's have a look at uh, two bits of information so if I was interested let's say in the food that people like and what music uh, if they agree that they perhaps like opera let's have a look at those two so if I highlight these two columns just so we can identify what they are so we go here just highlight a particular colour and then if we go to the top and click on there it will give us the full title so this one's about the opera and that one was about classical music let's try the opera so we'll highlight this as well in yellow and I'm just doing this so we can easily identify it later okay so what we're going to do is look at the foods and the options for opera which we strongly agree agree disagree strongly disagree and we're going to put them in a table to make a nice little chart so let's put our options in so I'm going to put in here uh, Chinese, kebab, pizza, McDonald's, and Indian. Okay, and then in here we'll put strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree okay it's important you put them in the same order that they would be in like a, a table of preference because it will show on the chart that will be next to that and so you'll have strongly disagree on one side and strongly agree on the other okay so here what we need to now do is add up the total number of people that said strongly agree to opera and also said that they wanted to eat Chinese okay so the way we do that is to use a formula called count ifs. So it's called count ifs because we're going to check multiple criteria at the same time. So when we type that in we open brackets and then we're going to select one particular area. So I'm going to select all of these options missing out the top line which is the label and then I'm going to put a comma in and then this is what we're going to check for. So I'm going to check for Chinese because I want to count the number of times that Chinese has been put in. So if I press the enter key it now comes up with eight to tell me that there's eight times that Chinese has been selected. Now we also need to check for strongly agree so if I double click back on there it'll bring the formula back up and now I go to the end and put another comma in and in this section just here I'm then going to highlight the other area where we've got about the music okay and then we put another comma in and this is our criteria and the criteria for this one is strongly agree and if I press the enter key it's come up and so two people strongly agreed they like opera and they ate Chinese now because this is a spreadsheet we don't have to go into each cell and type in the formula every time what we're going to do is drag across and then drag down as well now there is a little bit of a problem because when we drag across it's going to go from this cell, Chinese, it's going to go to the next cell and there is nothing in this cell so we need to tell it to fix the ranges so you go to the first range, this E2 to E24 and you press the F4 key and you'll see that there's dollars go in before the letter, before the number 
If F4 doesn't work for you, just put the dollars in before the letters and before the numbers. And the same with this other range here. We'll press F4 there and it fixes the opera range. And then here you see it says B27, which is this row and just there. So this cell with Chinese in it, we want this to be able to go down, but we don't want it to go across. So to fix it in this particular column, we're going to put a dollar before the B. And here, where we've got strongly agree and then agree, we don't want it to go down, we want it to go across. And therefore, we're going to put a dollar before the 26. So the row C can move on its own, whereas 26 is kept, so we're going to go across ways. So anywhere you see a dollar, it will fix the range for that row and that column. So if I click on the Enter key, it still puts in two, and now I can drag down, and then I can drag across. And that there is our numbers uh, for the different types of food and what their preferences were when it came to this particular type of music. So if I highlight all these and go to Insert and Chart, it'll show us a nice little example of what we're looking at. So here you can see the foods, you can see uh, and how people responded to the types of music. So we can see here that uh, people that had kebabs, six of them uh, disagreed that they like opera music, whereas Chinese it was very much more mixed. So we can evaluate with this. However, there is a problem because the number of people that said they liked Chinese and kebabs was a lot more than said pizza and McDonald's and Indian, and therefore we're giving an unfair weighting to their preferences. So what we need to do is level out the, the weighting for each person, and so we, I'm sorry, for each food, and therefore we need to transfer this into a percentage. So let's close that down, and what we need to do here is work out the total number of people that said Chinese kebab, pizza, McDonald's and Indian. So I'm just going to copy this. So we'll highlight this, right click it, copy, and then down below we'll go down, we'll do a paste special, and we're going to paste the values only, because I'd, I don't want the formulae, I just want the values. Okay. So here, what we're now going to do is work out the total number of people that said Chinese. So, let's do that. So, equals, and then we'll put count if. Now, we could use a count ifs here, it makes no difference. So, we'll put a count ifs, and then open a bracket, and then we're going to select our range. So, our first range was this one, and then we put a comma in, and then we're going to select Chinese. And when we press that, it'll give us the total. Now when we drag this down, it's going to drag the range down as well, and we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is just press the F4 key like we did before, and it put dollars before the range, and now it's there, and we can drag that down, and then this gives us the totals. Now this information here we copied from above. So we don't want that. So I'm going to delete all of that. And then we need to put in a formulae to convert these numbers to a percentage. So to do that, we put equals. And then we start off with our base number, which is 100, because everything's 100%. We then put a forward slash, which is divide. We're dividing that by the number of people that said Chinese. So if we press 8 there, that's going to be a perfect, but we want it to stay in this A column when we drag across. So what we're going to do here is just put in a dollar, an A34, and then we're going to times the whole thing by putting an asterisk at the end by this number here, the 2. Because it's going to, we're going to move it from this table to this table, but we're going to do some maths at the same time. So if I now press the Enter key, it's given us 25% of the people that said Chinese strongly agreed that they like opera music. If I drag that down, it'll move downwards, and then I can drag across, and there we go. We've got a nice bit of information. We can highlight that now, and go to the chart button, and you can see here, now it's a bit more representative, because we've got it out of percentages. So. The reason why some of these don't equal 100 is because not every person that said they like Chinese responded to this question. 
if everybody did respond to the question, it would all add up to 100. So this one, as you can see, actually only adds up to 75 because we got uh, two people that didn't answer the question. But you can see now that 100% of the people that said pizza, they strongly disagreed, they liked opera music, and 100% of the people that liked Indian said they did like it. So what you need to do here is label this by going to uh, customization. You put your axis titles in, uh, a legend if you if it's not turned on you can move it uh, around as well. You can put it on through there. Um, lots of options. Put your labels on, change the title, click insert and then you'll be able to put it straight into your document. Okay. Now what happens if we've got three sets of information that we want uh, to display? Well click on the next clip and then you'll see how to do that.